thank you for the opportunity to present a program recently launched by Admitech Foundation, International Working Group in Focal Treatment of Prostate Cancer. Admitech Foundation is a nonprofit organization and creator of the Menogram Project, leading state, national, and international programs in prostate cancer research, medical education, public awareness, and advocacy. Our programs have been transforming the standard of care in prostate cancer and reducing health disparities. The focal working group was established based on uh, discussions at the sixth annual global summit on precision diagnosis and treatment of prostate cancer that took place last September. Annual summit established since 2016 has made a seminal impact on the state of the art and future vision of prostate cancer care. Grand rounds in urology have been serving as our media partner since 2019. In this presentation, I will focus on summit session four, dedicated to image-guided focal treatment, its findings and recommendations. This session addressed precision diagnostics and their importance for patient selection, target definition, treatment monitoring, and outcomes. Our speakers showed growing evidence that image-guided, minimally invasive procedures provide comparable cancer control with significantly reduced complication compared to whole gland treatment. Precision diagnosis is critically important for risk assessment and patient selection for image-guided treatment. While MRI has been used most extensively, we have seen the emerging role of advanced ultrasound, molecular imaging, and multimodality imaging, and radiogenomics multiomics for target definition. More research is needed for improved patient selection and monitoring during treatment or shortly after. Almost every speaker in the session highlighted a slow pace of clinical acceptance of this technology largely due to the lack of definitive data. Admita has been leading development and clinical evaluation of image-guided minimally invasive treatment since 1998. When validated, focal treatment will become an important future addition to management strategies for patients in so-called gray zone, where risk assessment leaves clinical questions regarding the appropriateness of active surveillance or the necessity of the immediate radical treatment. Focal treatment may become an additional option for curative, palliative, or deferred intervention. To address this challenge, we establish a working group to expedite development of the research strategy, clinical validation, and adoption of minimally invasive focal treatment. To achieve this goal, we created a multidisciplinary executive committee consisting of the leaders of academia and National Cancer Institute to outline the agenda and broader participation. This effort is modeled after Admitech Foundation's international working group that expedited research, pilot standardization, clinical evaluation, and implementation of prostate MRI. Agenda item may include a multidisciplinary consensus on the current clinical challenges and research priorities related to defining patient selection criteria, developing short-term or immediate-term patient outcomes, and optimal approach to generating definitive data using randomized clinical trial vis-a-vis -vis patient registry. If a phase three clinical trial were to be recommended, the working group will design a research protocol. One of the major challenges in focal treatment is patient selection, highlighting the importance of precision diagnostics. We believe that integration of precision diagnostics, bioinformatics, and machine intelligence will be essential for the future of focal treatment. Our annual summit has played a central role in recognizing the importance of integrated diagnostics or radiogenomics for a comprehensive patient evaluation and optimizing management strategies. Over the last six years, we have seen a shift in radiogenomics from the fringes of research in 2016 to the center of the discussion on the future of precision care in 2022. Emerging data indicate that the future of patient evaluation may be based on multiple integrated diagnostics coined as multi 
omics. This is a case study provided by Dr. John Feller of Halo Diagnostics and demonstrating the importance of integrated diagnostics. In 2001, a 60-year-old man presented with MRI-guided Gleason score 6, an elevation of PSA considered at that time to be mild. Consequently, he was uh, considered a good candidate for minimally invasive treatment and underwent MRI-guided focal laser ablation. And yet, he had repeated recurrences in 2012 and 2016. After the second recurrence, his MRI-guided biopsy tissue sample was also sent for genetic analysis, which showed high genomic risk. Consequently, he was referred for radical treatment. Dr. Matt Cooperberg of UCSF showed that 15% of low-risk cases as assessed by standard diagnostics, including histopathology, had high-risk genomic features. Dr. Eric Klein of Cleveland Clinic highlighted prostate cancer as a biologic rather than a histologic disease. He pointed out that histology is useful for detecting a small volume low-risk disease and clear-cut high-risk disease. However, histology is less useful for a significant fraction of cases, including large volume, low risk prostate cancer and intermediate risk disease. And that's where genomic testing can make an important impact on personalizing patient care and selection of focal treatment. Dr. Klein highlighted two current pillars of precision diagnostics, MRI for visualization, characterization and staging, and genomics for underlying biology and prediction of progression, metastasis, and death. Dr. Paul Wooters of UCLA summarized the current and future direction in liquid and tissue markers. New prognostic biomarkers must have a proven increase in accuracy compared to the standard risk assessment tools. In addition, he pointed out the importance of predictive markers to individualize treatment. We need more prospective clinical trials to study these markers and how to incorporate them into predictive modeling and treatment planning. Today, MRI is the most common imaging modality for focal treatment. Dr. Perisco of Cleveland Clinic pointed out that MRI visibility appears to reflect the most aggressive cancer features based on histology, genomics, and patient outcomes. While cancer size and Gleason grade are the key determinants of the MRI visibility, we started seeing data indicating correlation between pirates and genomic expression. In contrast, MRI invisible lesions tend to have genomic and proteomic features of low-grade disease. Based on this data, we need to consider limitation of MRI alone for biopsy and treatment planning. Last year, we have also seen data showing limitations of MRI and PSA in studying intermediate outcomes of focal treatment, such as residual or recurrent disease. Over the last few years, we have seen important advances in ultrasound, molecular, and multimodality imaging and their potential role in patient care. Dr. Andre Ayagaro of Stanford, uh, in a preliminary study, showed that PSMA PET, when integrated with MRI, improved treatment planning and monitoring compared to MRI alone, including target definition, staging, and response assessment. Further research is required, including development of imaging based short term and medium term outcomes. While most current data in molecular imaging is based on PSMA, in my view, it is important to keep in mind that flucyclovin appears to be superior for the localized disease. In summary, session four of our summit demonstrated the importance of precision diagnostics, including liquid tissue and imaging markers and their integration for individualizing treatment. Short-term and medium-term oncologic outcomes remain a fundamental challenge in designing clinical trials of focal treatment. Current studies relying on mortality require at least 15 years. The lack of definitive data in turn is the main roadblock to clinical acceptance. This information will be taken into account by our working group, 
developing research and clinical strategy for accelerated clinical adoption and large-scale implementation of focal treatment. Please join us for the next summit taking place September 21st to 23rd this year virtually. At that time, we will present progress report of our focal treatment working group. Thank you for your attention.